Hi everybody and welcome to another video in the Deep Learning for Audio with Python series. This time you're gonna pre-process audio data and get it ready for our deep learning applications. So it, specifically we're gonna look into how to visualize and load waveforms, how to perform Fourier transforms for getting spectrums, how we get spectrograms and how we extract MFCCs. Now, if all of this sounds like gibberish, you should definitely like watch uh, my previous video where I cover like the theoretical side of all of these things. But uh, let's just like get started. So we're not gonna build like any of these algorithms for like performing Fourier transforms or extracting MFCCs from scratch, but rather we're gonna rely on a great audio analysis uh, library called Librosa, and so first thing we want to do it's imports uh, Librosa so uh, and as long as uh, we have like not just like Librosa itself but also Librosa.display uh, which is a nice API for visualizing uh, data like spectrograms uh, so Librosa.display is built on top of uh, matplotlib and so we want to uh, import also uh, matplotlib.py plots and we'll import it as PLT. Cool. So uh, the first thing that we want to do now is just like to, to get a file, so to get an audio file. So, and I have a very nice one, which is called blues.000000.wav. And uh, yeah, let's take a look at that so that you have an idea of what like we'll be working on. Yeah, you get idea. Uh, you get the idea here. It's a, a nice uh, like blues song. It's just like thirty seconds of that song. Cool. So the first thing that we want to do is load uh, like this audio file. So uh, for doing that, we'll call Librosa dots load, and we'll pass in the the path. So the file. And uh, we also want to specify the sample rate we want to load uh, like this audio file with. And we'll specify 22,050. Uh, and this is uh, like perfectly fine like when we uh, work and analyze like audio uh, data. Cool. And uh, so here as a result, we are going to get like a signal and a sample rate. Now, the signal is going to be a NumPy array, one dimensional array, and uh, it's going to contain uh, a number of like values that's equal to the sample rate uh, multiplied by the duration t uh, of, the, uh, of the song. So in this case, we are looking at 22,050 multiplied by 30 seconds. So basically like the signal array is gonna have more than 600,000 uh, values. And at each of these values, you're gonna have the amplitude of the, of the waveform. Uh, good. Okay, so now let's try to visualize this waveform. And uh, for doing that, uh, we can easily use Librosa.Display.WavePlot. And here in the WavePlot, we want to specify the signal that we want to use and the sample rate. And the sample rate, uh, it's equal to this thing over here. So 22,050. Good. So next thing we want to do is we want to uh, specify the uh, label for the x and y axis. So for the x axis, we are expecting obviously time. And for the y axis, we have amplitude. Nice. And the final thing we want to uh, show uh, this plot. And so we're going to do a plot.show. So if everything is correct, so we should be see, we should, we should be able to see our uh, nice plot. And here we have it. Nice. So we have our nice uh, waveform over here. And as you can see, 
the waveform tends to remain quite stable throughout the 30 seconds of this musical passage. Cool. So now uh, the next step is moving from the time domain, so from the, the waveform, uh, towards the frequency domain. And to do that, we need to perform a fast Fourier transform. And now for performing that, we're going to use NumPy. So we'll do an import NumPy as MP. So, so we'll do a FFT, it's equal to mp.fft.fft and uh, we'll uh, pass in uh, the signal. Right, and so what we expect here is a, uh, a NumPy array, one-dimensional array, which has as many uh, values as the total number of samples we have in the uh, in the waveform. So it's more or less like this value here, so uh, 600,000 plus. And at each of those values, uh, we have a complex value. Now, uh, I don't want to like get into the details of how we get there because like it's completely outside the scope like of, and it's not needed like for deep learning. But what we want to do is we want to move like from that complex value and get the amplitude of those values and or sorry get the magnitude of those value and for getting the magnitude uh what we do is we call numpy dots absolute uh value and we pass in uh, FFT. So basically we are performing the absolute value on the complex values and then we end up with these magnitudes and these magnitudes indicate the contribution of each frequency being to the overall sound. And so and we want to map them onto like the, the relative like frequency bins, right? And for doing that we'll do a frequent frequency it's equal to numpy dot uh, lin space, and a lin space is a nice function that uh, gives us uh, a number of evenly spaced numbers in an interval, right? And so here, the, the uh, frequency interval that we want to consider is between zero hertz and the sample rate itself. And uh, the number of like evenly spaced uh, values that we want, and it's equal to the length of magnitude. And so basically we have like these two arrays and magnitude has like the values. So the, the actual like magnitudes of each frequency bin. And so it's basic. So like these two, uh, like arrays together, are telling us how much each frequency is contributing to the overall uh, sound. Okay. So now let's plot this. And uh, for plotting this, which by the way is the power spectrum, uh, we don't have like a fancy uh, Librosa like shortcut <laughs> function. Rather, we should use vanilla. Uh, matplotlib. So we'll do plot dot uh, plot, and we'll pass in the frequency as well as the uh, magnitude. And then, yeah, I guess we want to pass the the labels as well. So on the x label, given we are in the frequency domain, we are expecting frequencies. So it's frequency. And on the y uh, uh, label, we are expecting magnitudes. So magnitude plot the show. Um, it's all good, but before uh, I run in the script, let me just like comment this out so that we are going to have just one plot, the one we are interested in. Okay, so let's run this, and hopefully we have our power spectrum. That's great, and as you can see, most of the energy is uh, concentrated in the lower frequencies. And the higher we go uh, with the frequencies and the less energy, the less contribution they will uh, give us. Now, let's take a look at this um, uh, plot. And there's, <laughs> when we analyze it, there's a very curious thing, which is the plot is symmetrical. And it's the, the, the kind of like point of symmetry here is the half of the plot, which represents like half of the sample rate. 
Now, this is like a property of the Fourier transform, and that can be explained with a concept from DSP, which is the um, Nyquist theorem. I'm not going to get into those details again because we don't need them, but what we need to understand is that we don't need the whole plot because basically the only part of the plot that's bringing us like uh, novel uh, information is the, the first half, right? The left uh, most half. And that's because like once we, we cross half the frequency here, we're just like repeating uh, like the, the same like information. So we just want to focus on the first half. So let's let's do that here. So uh, we can just like go back here and say that we want the left frequency frequency and this is going to be equal to frequency and uh, we'll just like consider f like from like the zero index to like half and that we can express by saying this is equal to int of the length of frequency itself and this is like divided by two so we are uh, just like considering the first half year of the frequency array and we should do the same thing for the magnitude uh, array so let's do this and this is the same and now we'll just change frequency for left frequency and magnitude for left magnitude so now let's rerun the script and nice here we have it our power spectrum focusing only on half of the sample rate so uh, until uh yeah i'd say like eleven thousand something uh right hertz there and uh again yeah we, we can easily see that like most of the of the energy is in the uh like lower frequencies nice the only problem that we have with the power spectrum is that it is a static snapshot of the whole sound and it's consider averaging like the um the energy of the different frequency bins throughout the whole sound and we what we want to do is like understanding how this uh, frequencies are contributing to the overall sound throughout time so in order to do that we need to do a short time uh, <laughs> Fourier transform an S a STFT and get a spectrogram so the spectrogram is going to give us information about the amplitude as a function of both frequency and time so how do we get an STFT ft well we use librosa for that so we do librosa dot core and then we call stft nice and uh here uh we should pass a few uh different values so first of all obviously we need to pass in the the signal but then there are another couple of values so one it's we can call it n uh, number of samples per fft and uh, we are going to set this to 2048 and this is expressed in a uh, number of samples and so this is basically like the window uh, that we are considering when um, performing a single uh, Fourier transform fast Fourier transform right so we are considering these amount of samples and then there's another value that's called the hop length and so let's set this to 512 so again this is in number of samples and this is the amount we are shifting uh each fourier transform like to the right because as you know when we do a short time fourier transform we slide uh, like an interval and at each interval like we we calculate a, a fast Fourier transform and the hop length tells us how much we are shifting we are sliding towards the right okay cool so like these two values that I've given here so 2048 and 512 are quite like custom, I mean ordinary values that we use like with uh, when analyzing music and even speech really okay so let's pass those two things in so the hop length is equal to the hop length and the 
NFFT is equal to NFFT. Good. And so now we have the short time uh, Fourier transform. And again, uh, now we need to move like from like these values to like the magnitude to the, spec the spectrogram like itself. So to do that, so first of all, let's call this variable spectrogram. And then we want to do an NP dot absolute value and we'll pass in uh, the short time uh, Fourier transform that we've extracted. Cool. And so here, basically, we are passing from those like complex numbers towards like the, the magnitudes. And here we, we get the whole uh, spectrogram. Right. Now let's plot the results. So to uh, do this, we are going to use a uh, function from Libreza Display. And the function it's called SpecShow. And SpecShow is a nice uh, function that enables us to visualize uh, spectrogram-like um, data. So, and this type of data, as you'll see, it's kind of like a heat map. So you have x-axis, y-axis, plus like a color that represents a third variable. So uh, what do we need here? So here uh, we need uh, obviously like the, the spectrogram, right? Then uh, we need to pass the sample rate and then we want to pass the hop length. Cool. And as usual, we want to take uh, and put to this plot the X label and the Y label. So for the X axis, at this time, we have time. For the Y axis, we have frequency. Now, so as we said, uh, the spectrogram is a function, so it's the uh, amplitude as a function of like time and frequency, and uh, the amplitude itself is expressed through a color. And so we can plot a color bar to see how the amplitude <clears throat> varies like uh, throughout like the spectrogram. Okay, so now as usual, let's uh, comment, comment this out so that we're gonna have just the um, the plot for the spectrogram. And now let's move on and run the script. And here we go. We have our spectrogram. Cool. Okay, so as you can see, most of the frequencies basically have very, very low amplitudes. So they contribute very, very little to the overall sound. And here, like down in the bottom, you can see that there are certain like bursts like of energy at the lower like frequencies, which is also like what we would expect from the uh, power um, spectrum, uh, spectrum like that we say like before, right? But now there's a way of like uh, smoothening like a little bit like this amplitude and like to like visualize them like in a, in a nicer way and in a way that makes also like m more sense like for the way we perceive loudness which is not linear which is like the way we are like visualizing these amplitudes here but rather it's a logarithmic and so we're going to use uh so we're, we're going to calculate the so-called log uh, spectrogram and uh, yeah, we can do it here. So we'll do a log spectrogram. And uh, for doing that, we can use a nice uh, Librosa uh, fl function uh, that's called amplitude to decibels. So we are taking uh, the amplitudes from our original spectrogram, which we should pass in. And then we are converting them to decibel. Uh, we, and I mean, when we do that, we use, we apply a logarithm. Cool. So now we have the log spectrogram. So let's pass that in here and let's take a look at the results. And here we go. Nice. Okay, so as you can see here, like all of these things like become like a little bit like more uh, uh, <laughs> like intelligible, I would say. And uh, like here, like with the blue, we have like very, very quiet sounds, like minus 30 like decibels. And 
while we go towards like these more reddish like colors, we we just like increase like the the, the perceived basically like intensity, right? And as expected, we have most of the energy uh, that's kind of concentrated in this like lower frequencies, and. If you guys re recall the uh, the waveform, like it was like quite, I would say like quite stable, like <laughs> throughout, and like and that could have been a little bit like of a of a hint into also like the the way uh, like the, the spectrogram like would behave to a certain extent, and obviously like what we see here is that like the spectrogram remains like quite stable throughout time. Cool. Okay, so now we've seen. Uh, like the spectrogram, the log spectrogram. Now we want to calculate the last thing. So we want to extract the MFCCs. So how do we do that? Well, that's as simple as calling Librosa.feature.mfcc. Nice. And so here, uh, for uh, calculating this, we need to pass the signal, so the original signal, and then we want to pass uh, a, a bunch of like different uh, values, uh, like for example, the uh, number, uh, like the, the, the number of samples per FFT. And this is equal to this. We want to pass in the hop length which is equal to the hop length. And so here, I just missed that. Oops, uh, over here. And uh, we also want to pass another value that's called number of MFCCs. So the number of coefficients that we want to extract. And let's say we want to extract uh, 13, which is like a f uh, fair like number that's commonly used like also for analyzing music. Uh, okay, so now we have the MFCCs, and as you can see here, we are passing these values, so the NF, uh, NFFT and the hop length, so the window and the hop length that we usually use when we extract uh, like the SDFT, so, and you can see it here, right? And why is that the case? Well, because if you recall from the previous video, um, one of the things, the first thing that we do for uh, extracting an MFCC is performing a short time Fourier transform. Cool. Okay, so now we have the MFCC uh, and we want to plot that. So to do that, we are going to use the spec show um, function from Librosa Display once again. But this time, instead of the log spectrogram, we're going to pass in the MFCCs. Uh, right, and uh, the X label is going to be time. The Y label, obviously, it's not going to be frequency, but the MFCC itself. So it's going to be like the different coefficients. We want the color bar, and we want to plot dot show this. So let's um, comment uh, out the the plot for the log spectrogram, and let's rerun the scripts. And so if all goes well, yeah, we have our MFCCs over time. And nice. So here, like on the y-axis, you'll see like these intervals, uh, like here. And each of these is basically like a, a coefficient. And if you count, it should be like 13. And on the x-axis, we have time. And so we basically see here how, how the different MFCCs are evolving over time. And once again, <laughs> like the, the MFCC like plots is quite stable. Cool. Okay, so we basically went through all the stuff that we need for pre-processing audio data for deep learning. Now you know how to uh, look at, it, at, at a waveform how to extract uh, like signal from a wave file, how to perform a Fourier transform, how to arrive at a power spectrum, spectrograms, log spectrograms, and most importantly, MFCCs, which we're gonna be using in the next video where we're gonna do something super exciting. So we're gonna use an MLP, so multi-layer perception, for uh, classifying music genres. So we're going to have a data set of uh, short experts of uh, music and we're going to classify uh, the type of like genres like they belong to. Cool. 
I hope you really like enjoyed this uh, video. If that's the case, please leave a like. And if you have any questions as usual, like post them in the comment section below and I'll see you next time. Cheers.